Welcome to Unit 13, Video 5, Enthalpy. By the end of this video, you should recognize endothermic and exothermic reactions. You should write, be able to write energy as a reactant or a product given an enthalpy change value. And you should be able to perform stoichiometric calculations using enthalpy. As you might recall, an exothermic reaction is a reaction where energy is released from the system energy exits, exothermic. If you touch the side of a beaker during an exothermic reaction, you should feel heat or energy coming off of the beaker. For example, when we burn methane gas in oxygen, we get CO2, water, and some energy. An endothermic reaction, on the other hand, is a reaction that absorbs energy. Endo to enter, endothermic. For instance, if we react N2 and O2, we need to add energy in order to produce the product NO. Here, if you touched the side of the beaker during this reaction, the side would feel cold because it's absorbing energy from the surroundings. The energy change of a reaction is the result of the difference between the energy required to break the bonds in the reactants and the energy released when new bonds are formed in the products. Recall that you have to put energy in to break bonds, but when bond, new bonds form, energy comes out. If more energy comes out when bonds are formed than energy went in to break bonds, then your reaction will be exothermic. If more energy was put in to break bonds than comes out when new bonds are formed, then your reaction will be endothermic. When we're talking about endothermic and exothermic, we always define the reaction itself as the system. Recall that thinking about system and surroundings, we can define exothermic reactions as reactions in which energy leaves the system and enters the surroundings, and likewise endothermic reactions where energy leaves the surroundings and enters the system. Now we want to quantify the amount of energy entering or leaving a system during a reaction. This quantity is called enthalpy. Enthalpy is the heat content of a system at constant pressure, and it's represented by a capital H. It's very similar to the heat of a reaction, or the energy of a reaction. The enthalpy change of a reaction is the difference between the enthalpy of the reactants and the enthalpy of the products in a reaction. Since we pretty much do everything at constant pressure, our enthalpy change will equal the amount of energy or heat absorbed or released in a reaction. Let's look now at these enthalpy diagrams, starting with the one on the left. Notice here that our reactants have a relatively high enthalpy value, and our products have a relatively low enthalpy value. This means that as we move from reactants to products, energy was released, making this an exothermic reaction. Notice also that if we take our enthalpy change, our final enthalpy minus our initial enthalpy, we get a negative value, so a negative delta H. Looking now at the reaction on the right, we see that our reactants began with a relatively low enthalpy, and our products had a higher enthalpy. This means energy was absorbed, making this an endothermic reaction and again giving us a positive delta H since our final value is larger than our initial value. So in summary, in endothermic processes, the sign on delta H will be positive because heat is absorbed, whereas in exothermic processes, the sign on delta H will be negative because heat is released. There's a stoichiometric relationship between the enthalpy change of a process and the amount of reactant consumed. We can do stoichiometric calculations just as we've been. The easiest thing to do in order to perform these stoichiometric calculations is to start by taking our change in enthalpy and writing it as a reactant or a product. So in this case, when we break down H2O2, we see that our change in enthalpy is negative 190 kilojoules. This means that 190 kilojoules are released because it has a negative delta H. Therefore, I've written 190 kilojoules as a product in my reaction. In other words, when two moles of H2O2 react, 
we yield 2 moles of water plus 1 mole of oxygen plus 190 kilojoules. That amount of energy is released. Looking at this reaction on the other hand, we see that when 1 mole of H2 and 1 mole of I2 are combined to yield 2 moles of HI, the reaction absorbs 53 kilojoules. We know this because the sign on delta H is positive. Therefore, we can write it as a reactant. H2 plus I2 plus 53 kilojoules yields 2 moles of HI. In summary, when our delta H is negative, it becomes a product because the reaction is exothermic. When our delta H is positive, it becomes a reactant because our, delta, our uh, reaction is endothermic. Now let's look at an example of how we can use this in a stoichiometric calculation. Here we're told that 4 moles of H2O are decomposed and we want to know how much heat is released. Let's start by rewriting our reaction with enthalpy in the reaction. So I know that I have 2 moles of H2O to, and that's going to yield 2 moles of H2O plus 1 mole of oxygen and 190 kilojoules. I know that this goes in the products because our delta H is negative. Therefore, it's an exothermic reaction. So 190 kilojoules will be released along with our products. Now it's just a simple mole ratio question. From our balanced equation, I know that 2 moles of H2O2 will yield 190 kilojoules. Therefore, 4 moles of H2O2 will yield x kilojoules. Solve for x, and I find that this reaction will yield 380 kilojoules of energy. Here's one to try on your own. Pause the video here and see if you can find these answers. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned how to recognize endothermic and exothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions are when energy enters the system, whereas exothermic reactions are where energy leaves the system. Then we learned to write energy as a reactant or a product. So if our delta H is positive, it's endothermic and our enthalpy is a reactant. If, it's negative, if our delta H is negative, it's exothermic and our enthalpy is a product. And then we learned to perform stoichiometric calculations using enthalpy.